Welcome back. We're finally in our last section of chapter one. We made it through our first chapter. Um, so we're going to look at variables and data. This is section one five. So a little bit of vocab. Variable. We've heard this in algebra. Same concept in statistics. It's just a characteristic that varies from one person or thing to another. So it won't be numbers all the time like math class, but it could be a number. So there's two types of variables. We have categorical and we have quantitative. So a categorical variable is just any variable in words. And it has no numerical meaning or no numerical value. <clears throat> so hair color, eye color, right? All of those would be described in words. Anything that's really categories. Um, another one that's kind of tricky might be, it would be zip code. Um, our zip code is a number, but that number doesn't have a numerical value. So 94545 isn't better than 94544, right? Numerically, it's just a different area. So zip code is kind of a weird exception and that's because it has no numerical value. Quantitative is a variable with a numerical value. Lots of examples. Age is a number, right? Height, shoe size, anything that could be a number where the number has like a number meaning. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and split the quantitative variables into two types. And so all this is going to be important because when we do do statistics in the later chapters, we're going to do different things with different types of variables. So that's why we need to know this now. So discrete is the first kind. Um, so if we have two possible values of the variable have numbers that exist between them, but they're not possible, um, then we call this discrete. Basically there's gaps. So if we look at the number of wins, right? You can win one game or two games, right? But you can't win one and a half games. So that's what my gap is. Right, students in a class. I can have one student, I can have two students. I can't have three and a half students. Uh, shoe size, right? Shoes are five, 5.5, 6, 6.5, and so on, right? But 6.25 doesn't exist. So basically there are numbers that exist but don't work, right? So 6.25 is a number, but it's not a shoe size. So that's what I mean by gaps. Versus continuous is when, if you think about continuous, right, it just continues. All numbers between any values are also possible. So there are no gaps. So time, right, time goes on forever. There's no gaps. Length, right, we can have one, we can have 1.1, we can have 1.11111, right, and so on. There's no gaps. It's basically anything is possible. Um, one last word and we'll jump into examples. Data um, is basically what we're going to do in statistics, right? We're just, it's the information obtained by observing values of a variable. So we collect data by collecting variables from lots of different people. So I just have a couple examples and we're done with our first chapter. So let's look at a sample of 100 students and we ask them what their major is. So the variable is basically what are we asking the people and what varies from person to person. So in this case, we're asking for major. So your major would be the variable here. That would be different from person to person. So it's kind of weird, right? We're not used to variables like that in math class, but that can be a variable here. If we looked at this class, right, the major would be different for everyone in the class. Um, what's an example of a piece of data? So again, a piece of data is what are we asking, but what are some answers we might get? Since I'm a math teacher, I'll say math. That was my major. 
Um, we usually have a lot of nursing students in statistics, so maybe nursing, right? There's so many majors, English, engineering, these are all examples. There's no one answer. But those are some examples. You're welcome to come up with your own. And then classify the variable just means what type. So the choices were categorical. And then I'm going to split up the numerical version, so discrete or continuous. So there's three choices. So peek up at those definitions and which one was this? So since it's in words and there's no numerical value, it'll be categorical, right? Major does not have a numerical value. So let's classify a couple more variables. Again, what type? And so think about this. If I asked you these questions, what would your response be? And that'll help you figure out the type of variable. So if I asked you the primary language spoken at home, you would tell me English or Spanish, right? That's something in words, no numerical value. So that would be categorical. Um, if anyone did track, you know what a javelin is. If not, Google it real fast. But we just throw something and we want to measure the distance. So distance is a length, right? There's lots of possibilities. There are no gaps, so this would be continuous. <clears throat> and then age is a tricky one. I think we could argue that age is continuous. And the fact that your age just keeps going, right? Every day you're getting a little bit older, but the way we often describe age is discrete. Um, when I'm asked my age, right, I give a number. Um, I don't give a decimal, I don't give and a half, right? We usually just describe someone as one, two, three, four, five, right? Do, do, do. Someone could be 20, 21, right, 22. We don't normally describe 21.1, 21.2, 21 and a half, right? We usually describe age as discrete. So age is kind of a weird one where it could be either way. Like the act of age is a continuous thing, right? Every day we're aging, um, but the way we describe it is usually discrete. So when we collect age data, it's usually a number, a whole number, and the gaps we don't allow someone to input 21.5. So I just threw in one final example to just kind of review all of our vocab. Why not, right? Get a little refresher at the end of the chapter. So why don't you guys take a second, read this paragraph without me. You'll probably get more out of it reading it without me. And then we will answer questions. So I will pause for 30, 40 seconds while you read that. If anything stands out, circle it or underline it. If you need more time to read, just hit pause. Um, so let's figure out the primary response variable. So response variable is like an output or the question. So it looks like there's something about potatoes varying, but that's not really what we're asking people. Um, it looks like we're also reading, we're measuring um, blood pressure. Um, there's two types of blood pressure right, diastolic and systolic, but that's what we're measuring. So the response variable is the person's blood pressure. That's what we're measuring at the end of the designed experiment. Oh, and I just answered B. 
Um, so is this observational or designed? The reason I said designed is because it looked like the study um, assigned people groups, right? Half of them were asked to eat the skin and flesh of small purple potatoes, while the others were asked not to. So this is designed, right, because the groups were controlled. Control is really the big difference. Um, treatments was another vocab word. What are the treatments? <clears throat> so the treatments are the groups. So it looks like the groups were either eating purple potatoes or not eating purple potatoes. And then anybody remember not eating purple potatoes? This group is the no, um, they have no treatment and we call that the control or the placebo group. They're the one with no treatment. So no potatoes would be no treatment here. All right, and then two more important things, replication, oops, randomization and replication. Um, was this random? So sometimes we don't know. Let's see. They had middle, 19 middle-aged adults, half were asked to eat potatoes, while the others were not. I don't see anything about random. Um, does that mean it wasn't random? No, um, it just means we don't know. So just because something isn't stated doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means we don't know. And maybe that's frustrating with statistics, right? We don't always have the answer in statistics. And then the final question is how about replication? So replication just means we did it for more than one person. So 19. Um, is 19 enough people? I don't know the answer to that yet. Um, that's something we'll discuss as we go through the semester. But it was replicated because there were 19 adults. And that's a quick, simple explanation. 19 adults, right? More than one. So shoot me an email if you have any questions or come visit my office hours. Um, sounds good.